Psalms chapter 12. God our Father, therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us. Persevere in running the race that lies before us, while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the thrones of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortion addressed to you as sons. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. For scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are without discipline, in which all have shared, you are not sons but bastards. Besides this, we have had our earthly father to discipline us and respected them. Should we not then submit all the more to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a short time as seemed right to them. But he does so for our benefit in order that we may share his holiness. At the time, all discipline seems of cause, not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Penalties of disobedience. Strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness with which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter root spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled, that no one may be an immortal or profane person like Isaiah, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that later, when he wanted to inherit his father's blessing, he was rejected because he found no opportunity to change his mind, even though he sought the blessing with the tears. You have now approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and storm, and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. For they could not bear to hear the command, if even an animal touches the mountain and shall be stoned. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem and countless angels in festal gatherings and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven and God, the judge of all and the spirits of the just made perfect and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. So that you do not reject the one who speaks, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much more in our case if we turn away from the one who warns from heavens? His voice shook the earth at that time, but now he is promised, I will once more shake not only earth, but heaven. That phrase once more points to the removal of shaken, creates things, so that what is unshaken may remain. Therefore we, who are receiving the unshakable kingdom, should have gratitude with which we should offer worship pleasing to God, and reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire.